and oh my Lanta. If you guys are watching the replay, go listen to Stacy's call because I just learned so much. And honestly, at the end there, it was hard for me not to like sob crying because redemption. And I feel like that is the part of this business that all of us can attach to is it, like products, business, whatever the re- the redemption of something that was once taken away or once not there and now is so fully present in our life. And I'm going to only be talking here for like 20, 23 minutes because I have to be off right at 730 central, but I'm going to cram everything of what I want to say into that time. And so hopefully you can spend some extra time loving on your family, loving on your kids, whatever, because that's what this business allows us to do is to do the things that we want to do that make life beautiful. Things like be around for our kids when they get off school or drop them off or be able to take them to Oktoberfest and spend $80 on rides so they can have the time of their life or be able to give them supplements and things like that. So anyway, Stacy, thank you so much for all of that. That was so seriously amazing. Um, Bethany, you just muted yourself. Hang on. Sorry about that. Sorry about go. that. I tried to move my screen because uh, I wanted to see you guys, but it's fine. It's just not going to work out because I'm on my phone and I was going to say, I will I would explain, but I don't have time to talk about why I'm on my phone. So I'm here in my Jeep and I just got this Jeep like two weeks ago. And I want to tell you the story to talk about authentic selling because Stacy just told you all about the products. I feel like it's a safe assumption for you all to realize like, this is the best product. These are the best products ever. The oils change lives. I know I've seen my mom go from bedridden, not able to go to any of my volleyball games in, in high school to fully vibrant up earlier than me and in, in the morning and up later than me at night. I've, I've seen real life people change. I've seen my little son who is three days old, yellow as my Jeep and my Jeep is yellow as my shirt. Um, who was just not go- doing good. And I got the call from the hospital that said, Hey, we're going to have to bring him back in. And I was like, mm, I don't know what to do. So I went to Dr. Google and Google gave me an oil suggestion and I put it on his feet and I watched his body have a detox reaction that proved to me in that moment that these oils are actually powerful. They're not cute. They don't smell good. They're not like, yes, they are cute. And yes, they smell good, but they're so much bigger than that. They hold the key to the problems in our world being literally like, I can't imagine going through this world without oils. Let me just say it like that. I'm like, ah, I got to try to be like politically correct here. Okay. So I'm, I'm coming to this conversation, assuming that you and I are already sold out on oils and that we love them and that we know the power of them. <laughs> um, so with that assumption, let's talk about how to actually make a powerful sale like actually make an authentic connection with somebody and somebody. And I want to tell you the story of when I bought my Jeep to give you a real life example of this. Okay. So I woke up one day and I was feeling a little feisty. And I told my husband, I want to go buy a Jeep today. And he was like, okay, great. We've been talking about me getting a fun vehicle and something that's not a minivan. And he had a vehicle he was getting rid of. So I was like, all right, let's do it. So I drove to the nearest um, Jeep dealership and I walked in with my, I'm going to buy a Jeep today energy. And I was full, like, can you imagine what a dream I was to the salespeople? Like they were probably like drooling. Like this person is like walking on the lot, ready to buy a vehicle. This is amazing. So I, I walked in, the guy was super nice. He showed me around, showed me a few options, but he had already decided what he wanted me to buy. He had already decided he wanted me to buy this one that was on the lot that day, walk away with it. And after I told him all of my specifications, some of my specifications were not in that Jeep. There were a few things that were really important to me that I just, that that Jeep didn't have. (coughs) So I called my brother-in-law who's like my Jeep guy. He, you know, I show him under the hood, this Jeep he was trying to sell me was not new. It just wasn't exactly what I wanted, but this guy was going at it and he wanted me to buy the Jeep. So I walked in and I was like, bro, I was like, thank you so much for helping me. Thank you for the the time. I need to go cross check and see all the other dealerships and see what they've got going on before I make a purchase today. And it was like, he couldn't handle it. It was like, he, he felt like his job to be the best Jeep salesman would be to grab, not physically, but like emotionally grab onto me and not let me walk out of there. You know, and he even said things like, well, my manager, you know, knows that when someone walks away, they're most likely not going to buy Jeep or whatever. And I'm like, 
well, dude, like it's not the Jeep I want. So let me go look around. So I left that place feeling like he was disappointed in me. I felt bummed that I couldn't help him out, but also just kind of icky. And I was like, ah, I don't like that. So anyway, I decided to go to a different Jeep dealership and I drove all the way around across town and I walk up to the Jeep estate line, which is where I ended up buying my Jeep. And this guy walked out super friendly. I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Bethany. And he's like, Hey, I'm Dalton. And we just had this great conversation and connection. And he, 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 I, he, I was like, all right, show me what you got on the lot. I'm in the Jeep buying mood. Like what's going on? And he, he was like, all right, well, we got this one going on. He asked me a few questions, showed me a different one. And then he got a phone call and he just answered his phone. Like while we were talking, he's like, I'm so sorry. I got to take this real quick. So he answered his phone. He's like, I'm so sorry. And I thought that's kind of weird for like a salesperson to like answer their phone while they're talking, but whatever. I like the dude. So it was fine. And uh, he was like, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Uh huh. And then he hung up and he said, I'm so sorry. That was actually the police because my Jeep was stolen today. And uh, he's like, been super hard day. Like my Jeep was stolen today. But the good news is with these Jeeps, they have GPS built in. So they were able to find my Jeep. And I was like, dude, that's so crazy. I'm so sorry that happened. He was like, thanks so much. Like he wasn't telling me that information to make me feel sorry for him. It just, it just came up. He was authentic telling me what was going on when he got the phone call. And I was like, wow, that is really cool. Cause he could have been like, man, it's been a hard day, whatever. So then we go inside. And I start, you know, he, he's asking about, um, you know, so something came up about money and uh, I can't remember exactly, but I was like, yeah, we're actually about to buy a house. And he's like, oh, no kidding. He's like, we were actually about to buy a house too. And I was like, yeah, what changed? The market's hard. And he's like, actually, he's like, my mom actually passed away last month and I ended up using our down payment for uh, a, a proper funeral for her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. And he was like, thank you so much for that. And I was like, yeah. Meanwhile, let me tell you, it's two days to the end of the month. <clears throat> and I said, Dalton, you, you do a really good job with selling Jeeps. Like you are so legit. You like, I can just tell you do it. You, you do really well. How many Jeeps do you sell every month? He's like, well, usually I sell 20, but this month I'm at six. Cause I did take so much time off to like help with my, with my mom and everything like that. And I was like, wow. I said, I want to buy a Jeep from you like this month, just because of that. I, I like, I want to, he's like, well, here's the deal. He, he's like, with what you told me you want with your Jeep <clears throat> and what we have on the lot, it would actually be cheaper for you and better for you to completely custom order a Jeep. And you'd have to wait six to eight weeks, but I feel like that would be the best deal for you. And I was like, well, Dalton though, like you want to close the deal like t like this month, right? Like, would that pay you this month? And he's like, no, 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 no. This isn't about me. This is about you getting the best deal. More things transpired. And I found out, found out that his wife was pregnant with her third baby and the baby was going in for a growth scan. So he wasn't even going to be into the, there was something going on where the baby was, you know, too small or whatever, according to their charts. And so we like, all of this to say, the dude had everything going for him to pressure me into a sale, yet he brought up that it would be a better deal for me to custom order a Jeep. Y'all, I wouldn't have it. Well, yeah, we're meeting. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm like, we're chatting. We are chatting. Dalton and I are chatting. But we, I went in, I had just had this gut feeling. I'm like, I got to buy a Jeep from Dalton. This was like last time. I'm like, I got to buy a Jeep from Dalton. I walked in on month end and I was like, bro, do you have any Jeeps coming in on the lot that are already ordered that are brand new? And he's like, well, let me go look. And he goes and he looks, he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, we have this one and it, it has literally everything you wanted with exception of one thing. It's not blue. It's yellow. And I'm like, done. I'll take it. I'll buy it today. I want to get it today. So I got to buy a Jeep from him that day. And I'll tell you the reason why I wanted to buy a Jeep from him so much is to me, like buying a Jeep is a big, big deal, but it's not as big a deal as probably like it would be for like most people. Like I'd already decided I was buying it. It was just one of those things I needed to go in. Right. But because he was authentic with his story and because he had my needs before his needs, as far as the consumer was more important to him than actually just closing the seventh deal that month, he earned my loyalty and he earned not only my loyalty, but my my desire to support him in his business. And I walked away <coughs> from that dealership 
with a less a lesson in authenticity, which was this. If you want people to be about what you're doing, you have to let them in on the struggle of the process and you have to let them in on the desi- on how much you want it for them. If you can do that, they will want to buy from you. People are not trying not to buy from you and you don't have to convince them of anything. You just have to be authentic in telling your side of the story. What is it about, what is it about for you? How, like that, that last five minutes for Stacy, where she was crying and telling the story, how she's like, her son, like was going to that school and he now is redeemed and like, is like working at that school that let us in. And I'm going to like, I'm with Stacy. I'm like, you don't ever have to apologize for crying or showing emotion. That is your superpower. What, and not just Stacy, all of us who are conditioned to believe that if we shed a tear or our voice shakes or we get emotional, it makes us weak. No, that is your most authentic power because the goal is not to dominate a conversation, dominate a connection, dominate so- social media. The goal is to connect authentically with people. And when they can see your struggle and they can see like all of the background to why you're doing what you're doing, that is when they want to support you and they will jump at the opportunity to fill their needs with your product. And so I'm emotional about it because here's the thing, you know, and I think it's so cool how we in Young Living have such a kick butt community. I mean, last week I was supposed to be talking, speaking on this call and I was so sick and Jill on call just jumped right in and did the call for me. I'm like, that is what it means to be in a special community. That's what it means to be supported. And tonight I'm listening to Stacy talk about these products and her story with dyslexia and ADHD. And I'm like, that presentation was so powerful for her. I could never Like if it was like a competition on like who could speak about ADHD better, she would win hundred days in a row. However, now I get the chance to talk about business, which is what I love to talk about when like, and so it's like, we can take each other's gifts and and bring it out into the world and actually bring something of value. So (coughs) sorry, I'm still like recovering from this cough. I'm still working on, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. All of the oils right now are just amazing for me, but with that authenticity, it also means finding your specific magic. Because for some of you, you haven't figured out what you're good at yet in the business. You haven't figured out what's your magic. You haven't figured out what gets you results. When you sit down one-on-one with someone for coffee and you enroll that person every time, you're like, or like, let's say like, you're like, yeah, I've gone, I've gone to coffee dates and I can enroll anyone all, all the time, but I heard I was supposed to teach a class. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're supposed to just go to coffee with people. Or maybe it's flip, flip-flopped. You're like, yeah, the one-on-one coffee doesn't really do it for me. But when I teach a class, oh my gosh, I can just tell the information. People soak it up. They take notes. That's your magic in this specific business. Are you a one-to-one person? Or are you a one-to-many person? Are you a person who's on social media? Or are you a person who meets people at the park? Are you a person who dresses in a business suit and goes to networking events? Or are you a person who goes to mom groups and sits on the floor with yoga pants? Whatever it is for you, you can make it work. And your gifts are not only valuable, but they're needed in Young Living. They're needed in order to get this message out into the world. So some of you, like, you just haven't found that yet. And I just want to encourage you that the closer you can get to your ideal self, that's going to get clearer and clearer. And a lot of us have some unworking to do. We have some layers to peel back of things that we thought we were supposed to be or ways that we thought we were supposed to engage with the world. And I'm just here to tell you when you can get clear on how you engage in the world, world, this is how you'll know. When I ask you, what is your magic? What is your magic? And you know the answer clearly to that. Oh my gosh, your world will change. When you know your magic, when you're like, I I have a friend, her name is Bethany Har. And I asked her this question. And it's so funny because I know her magic because I'm her friend. So I know it clearly. I'm like, oh yeah, I know her magic. But when when we were sitting at the table and she was like, gosh, this is challenging for me. And I'm like, all right, when you know your magic, the first layer of knowing your magic, you're going to be like, Uh, oh, but that's just normal. That's just not special. That's just the way I am. Let me tell you, understanding your magic in action is when you understand how special it really is. So my friend, Bethany, her magic is she is the personification of a hug. So like when people are around her, they feel so warm and cozy. They feel so supported. They feel so loved. Like they just feel so seen. They, They don't have to fill the space with talking. She just comfortable. 
She's just comfortable. That is her magic. To her, that's just normal. It doesn't seem like extra or whatever. It's just normal. When you first, the first layer is to understand your magic is you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's just really normal. And then when you start acting in your magic and lives start being changed, that's when you're going to know you're using your magic as your superpower. So that's the shift is from where it's just like, oh yeah, that's normal. That's what I do to actually people having redeemed stories from actually people having transformation. Young Living's business metrics are a really good way if you are focused on growing a business to know what kind of impact you're making on uh, in the world. Like if you're not enrolling people as far as like changing people, like changing people's lives, you're knowing you're not using your magic for that. So it's just simply an uh, a, allotment of um, attention. So with all of that being said, I want to, um, let's see, I want to share with you an experience. You might've heard me say this because I think I talked about it before, but I want to share an experience of, um, when we went to Florida for a few months in the February and let's see, January and February of March, I'm sorry, of last year, January and February. And my kids would go play out. We were literally right on the beach. My kids would go outside and play. And the house beside us was an Airbnb. And sometimes, some weeks, we were there for four weeks. So some weeks, there would be like a family that would come with little kids. And so my kids would always wait to see like, who's the next Airbnb people, you know? So like, see if they could have playmates. <laughs> well, one family came and they were playing on the beach. And my, my son, he is more of like a sits on the sidelines and waits for my daughter to go and initiate the friends, you know? So he's like more of a timid, like he says he's shy, which I'm just like, whatever. I don't, I don't buy it, but he's more like background. And then she, my daughter, she's five. She'll just walk right up and Hey, you want to be my best friend, you know, like polar opposites of gifts and skill sets and whatever. And Lennon just, my daughter just happens to be super good at the skill set of making new friends and engaging with new people. Well, so I'm watching them and I'm standing back at the deck and um, they're just both just staring at these kids. Like, and I can tell they just want to be friends. And I'm thinking to myself, gosh, just go, just go over there and introduce yourself. It's going to be so much fun. You're going to have so much fun playing with these kids in the sand. It's going to be so worth it. Just that initial like awkwardness to get over. It's going to be so worth it. You just go over there. And they were just looking, they wouldn't do it. And I thought to myself at the same time that last week, I had been at the grocery store and there was someone that I wanted to be friends with. I wanted to make a connection with, but I had that like fear of like, I don't know, rejection or whatever. Like, are they going to think I'm weird if I like ask to follow them on social media? And I don't, I, I feel like for the most part, I've kind of gotten over that, that fear and I just do it now as habit. But, but for whatever reason, that was a perfect example. It was convicting because here I was on the deck being like, yeah, go put yourself out there, go make a new friend, go be brave and all this stuff. Meanwhile, I, the adult was not leading in in an example way. I was being scared. I was being timid. I was being afraid. I was being uh, afraid of vulnerability is what it came down to. And it's so funny because as parents, we do that, right? We like tell our kids, go be brave, go do hard things, work hard, apply discipline, learn the new skills. You can do it. And we don't actually do it ourselves. So here is what I'm going to challenge you with tonight. <coughs> Sorry. I think there might be something unmuted. Um, let's see here. Or maybe not. Here's what I'm going to challenge you to with, with tonight. Decide to learn the skills of network marketing. And you might be like, what? The skills of network marketing? If that's where you're at. Hey, the skills of network marketing are in Eric Worre's GoPro book. It's like finding prospects inviting prospects, presenting to prospects, prospects, um, following up with prospects, inviting to events, um, and onboarding new prospects. And, uh, one more, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, the seven, but go and even like Google, what are the seven skills of network marketing? According to Eric worry, look at them and ask yourself really got honestly, how am I doing on these? Am I mastering the skills? Because if you're not mastering the skills, that's where your weak spot is. You don't have to be um, like, <laughs> so sorry about the cough, guys. Um, you don't have to be like perfect at them day one. 
Just like we don't expect our kids to be able to ride our bi their bikes day one. We have to work really hard on all of the little things, steering, pedaling. Eric Worre is the author, E-R-I-C-R, -R, um, sorry, E-R-I-C, and then Worre is W-O-R-R-E. So, um, so the skills, we don't expect our kids to be perfect at math on, uh, on third grade when they're in first grade. No, we just say you have time. You got to learn it. Let's apply that same concept to ourselves. Let's give ourselves the grace to learn. And then we actually go and actually master the skills, actually practice them, actually work hard um, at this business, just like we would want our kids to do. So with that, my friends, that's what I have for you tonight. Um, I'm going to check the comments really quick. And oh my goodness, it got dark in here. Let's do this real quick. What I would suggest, and I don't, I obviously, you'll have to take it all with a grain of salt because I don't know your exact situation, but I would say to first start with the people that you enrolled before that you're in your team before and ask, just connect on a personal level and make sure that they know that they're loved and like that you're thinking about them. And then I would analyze really honestly, like, do I have a warm market to invite to an event? If I don't, I need to focus there. I need to start by like joining a new networking group or um, joining a new gym or going to um, my kids PTA and being involved, like create a warm market. If I do have a warm market, then I would just put a class on the schedule and then get people invited. All good stuff. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, my pleasure. How do you work with um, having children? I, I'm, that's like the hardest thing that I'm dealing with right now is finding time while I'm with my daughter all day and also still doing like housework and cooking and, you know, like my own finding time for my own needs. I'm really struggling with that. Yeah. How old is your daughter? She's going to be two next month. Okay. Gotcha. That's a hard age. Cause sometimes she probably doesn't nap. Um, she does, but it can vary from, you know, a half an hour to two or three hours, but sometimes I have to be napping with her. So it's kind of, I mean, I guess I can do things on my phone, but I like to be writing uh, things down and getting things done. Yeah. Well, I hear you. I mean, gosh, it's definitely not something that I feel like there's like a manual for, or like that's easy. Um, but I'll just tell you what we've found works for our family right now is my, my older three go to school, um, every, you know, Monday through Friday. And then my two-year-old goes to preschool, like a half day on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And then my little daughter, um, who's 10 months or sorry, 11 months old. She is, um, yeah, she just takes like two naps. So, some days I'll leave her with my husband and I'll go to the coffee shop. Um, other days I just, we do a lot of easy meals, like easy, 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 like instant pot meals. I'll make like my husband or I will make like a big pot of black beans and we just eat on that for like two days. <laughs> like we just have a big, and then we just make rice and put it on top. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I am so sorry. I have to head out because I'm starting to get messages. Where are you? I'm supposed to be on my call right now. <laughs> All right. 